Hi, I'm Keith McMahon, Lead Analyst at the STL Partners. Uh, I'm here today to speak about digital entertainment, specifically the way the various types of media are moving online. We'll start in part one with games and music and finish off in part two with books and films. So overall, we're still in the early days in the move towards digital. Uh, games and music are transitioning quite nicely at 42 and 32% of revenues respectively. Books and films are still lagging and are very much in the early days of adoption. So if we move on to our uh, first area, which is gaming, and look at the revenue models and distribution for online. The four main types of platform, the first of which is the massively multiplayer online gaming platform, as typified by World of Warcraft. There is a monthly subscription to this of about $15 if you're in the USA, and substantially cheaper if you're in China. There are a variety of goods, that, uh, virtual goods, that you can buy in in-app purchases that uh, bump up the ARPU a little bit more. The overall revenue of this platform is about a billion dollars per annum, which is not bad for a single uh, gaming title or gaming franchise. The platform underlying it is one which has evolved over the years um, and is owned by uh, Vivendi, the owner of the uh, World of Warcraft games, and it's called Battle.net. Basically, they've stripped out the auth authentication and payments aspects of World of Warcraft and made that available to other online titles. There's roughly about 12 million subscribers in the on this platform, and the business model, you don't have to pay for access to the Battle.net platform, the online aspects. It's just actually subsidised by all the World of Warcraft and similar games revenues. Consoles have been around since the start of gaming. The example here is Xbox Live, owned by Microsoft, which is driven by a monthly subscription to the platform. There's roughly 30 million subscribers across the world, and each title, such as uh, Call of Duty, is treated uh, much the same way as a traditional packaged game is treated. So you can buy them in physical retail or you can get them sent to your home from uh, Amazon. These are the vast chunk of the whole of online gaming. Um, Call of Duty, for instance, there was queues around the, uh, around the shops when it was released and it took in three quarters of a billion dollars just in its first five days of uh, release. But the whole of consoles is a very, very traditional business model where they're selling on a per title basis, there's very little uh, in-app purchases, and Xbox, the platform, the underlying platform, has a different business model from the game's publishers. Two new platforms have emerged over the last three, three to four years. The first one's the App Store, as typified by Apple, where we have titles such as Angry Birds. Um, there are a variety of business models that Angry Birds are supporting, from paid-for apps to ad-supported apps to even uh, general memorabilia such as cuddly toys that they sell. Angry Birds, the owner, uh, publisher, Rovio, will turn over about $100 million in 2011. The uh, App Store business model is all around a share of the title revenue. So whether those are uh, application sales or in-app purchases and Apple Tech's 30% of the gross. Uh, in terms of the game center, which is the online aspect of um, the iOS platform, it, last November, Apple mentioned that there was roughly 67 million activated, which is very different from how many people are active, if you like. 
Uh, I would guess we could half that figure. So there's about the same number of subscribers to iOS as there is to Xbox Live. The real phenomena of, of the last three years has been the rise of social gaming, especially on the Facebook platform. This is t uh, personified by Zynga, um, who had an IPO uh, late last year and roughly will do about 1.2 billion in 2011 revenues, which is very good considering most of the revenues come from either in-app purchases of virtual goods or ad supported. The Facebook platform that uh, Zynga operates on has a very similar uh, model to the Apple one where they take 30% of the title revenue and we're talking huge numbers. There's 230 million unique users on active unique users on the Zynga um, range of games alone. Um, if we look across them, something like the Zynga platform has an ARPU of around $1.50 uh, per user per month, whereas the World of Warcraft has just slightly under US dollars uh, 10 per month. Xbox is variable depending upon the monthly subscriptions, about $5 a month, but it's variable according to how many games in the search you buy. Probably in terms of profitability, the, the owned um, online uh, World, World of Warcraft type platform is the more profitable. There has been very little experimentation with the underlying business models on gaming. It is very much on a per title basis. We've seen very little bundling and packaging of titles. There's been some historic bundling of hardware and software, especially uh, to sell Xboxes, Playstations and Wiis at Christmas. The example here being a, uh, a special pack with a fitness game. Um, Games by Rental, which is a similar business model to uh, Netflix in the physical film uh, model, where for a fixed subscription you can have access to one DVD disc, which is uh, posted to you, really have not gained a mass audience so far, which implies that a full online subscription model will struggle. However, there's been a recent launch of a platform called Online, which a telco called BT from the UK has an interest in, and they are trying to build a cloud platform gaming uh, service. This platform faces the typical uh, conundrum for the platform owner that it's uh, its value is only once all the major titles are on there. So they need to incentivize the developers um, to port their platforms, uh, their games onto the online platform. Um, this is the biggest barrier to adoption. If without the content, you don't get the users. Without the users, the content owners are reluctant to move over there. So at the moment, the online platform is very embryonic. Some general conclusions about um, online gaming is the business models primarily driven by selling individual titles on inco incompatible platforms. So a, a, a large selling uh, title such as Call of Duty has a lot of effort, a development effort importing from the Xbox to the PlayStation or other platforms such as uh, the PC or even um, the um, iOS. Some of the huge selling titles though, there is porting. So it, the EA sporting set of games always come out on multiple platforms including iOS. New platforms can emerge in the gaming sphere, and we've seen that from the Apple and Facebook examples. So 
although it's difficult to get uh, developers and content onto your platform, it's not an impossibility. In terms of business model experimentation and subscriptions and bundling titles together, there's little historic evidence of these being successful strategies. This means that in our, um, in our Telco 2 mind, the key role for Telcos is probably limited to selling billing enablers to platform owners. So these would be um, using prepaid balances and postpaid balances to pay for virtual currencies on things like Facebook and Xbox Live. This is a very comp uh, cost competitive uh, <clears throat> offer rather than uh, the current way of distribution, which is either via credit card or there's a lot of gifting going on through third parties like uh, gift cards, through third parties like supermarkets. Moving on to music. Music is, has a much, much richer set of business models than gaming uh, and has been relatively successful in deploying a, a wide type of um, uh, business models. We have ownership as typified by iTunes and uh, Amazon, downloading of singles and al albums. Um, we also have the major subscription services, which have been much in the news in 2011, with Spotify's launch in the USA and Deezer's launch uh, in other European countries apart from France. And this is a simple monthly subscription to a vast catalogue access over a range of devices. The subscription model is one favoured by telcos, and we have some examples of telcos bundling music services with voice and messaging. Uh, Move Music launched in 2011 in the USA on the Cricket Network, and we also have Kubo Musica, which was uh, launched in Italy with Telecom Italia. But there are various other examples. And this is when elements of a music service are included in the monthly ISP or uh, mobile operator bill. Ad funded, uh, typified by internet radio such as Pandora or general video as typified by Vivo is hugely popular. It's funded by advertisers, um, but profitability is unsure. Um, Pandora IPO'd and the net profitability of the service is very low, and this is due to the, the amount of um, uh, royalties that they have to pay over. Piracy is still a big problem in music. Uh, the IFPI, which is the trade body for music, recently estimated that one in four online people use a pirate site at least once a month. And this has moved on from the uh, P2P days and we have things now like um, illegal lockers such as Mega Upload and also YouTube converters which take a, video, a music video on um, uh, YouTube and converts it into an MP3. Overall, in some markets, digital now exceeds physical revenue such as the USA and in some markets, uh, uh, such as Sweden, subscription revenues are now higher than download revenues. So we have quite a uh, rich area uh, of uh, business models in music. The big difference from gaming is that there's more friction because the value chain is much more complex. So gaming publishers normally have a very close relationship with the platforms and it's quite a simple uh, business model. The more the game publishers uh, sell, the more revenue they earn. Whereas in the music, the record labels have uh, inserted themselves between the musicians and it is very complicated to get local and almost impossible to get worldwide rights. And record labels ask for huge advances from the music uh, platforms. So I think it would be fair to say, although there are more types of business model 
Um, there is a, a certain barrier to entry, which is the upfront advances required by the record labels. In summary, lots of music platforms, but profitability is uncertain and in a, in a sense controlled by the licensing terms of the music labels. Music platforms have huge ca catalogues. There's approximately 20 million tracks online and most catalogues have over 10 million. There is a problem with the youth demographic where expectations are that music is free, but we're seeing some of the subscription models, for instance, Spotify in the USA, making ground in this youth market. There's a lot of legal and regulatory uncertainty on the piracy legislation, and these have a direct impact on telcos who have to uh, follow, obviously, whatever the, is the relevant legislation, but there's uncertainty around this. And there's a big opportunity for telcos in music, both in bundling with their services, e.g. they can promote a single every week, or, you know, it doesn't have to be a full um, music platform catalogue, or even doing some uh, direct billing for the music platforms for small one-off purchases.